In this video I'll do a deep dive into callbacks and address some of the biggest stumbling blocks that beginners hit. First I'll show you how to pass parameters into a callback, I'll then explain callback scope and show you how to reference an animation from a callback, I'll give you a friendly warning about using arrow functions as callbacks, and lastly I'll show you how to change the callback scope in case you ever need to. This may not be one of my fanciest videos, but I'm confident it's one of my most important. Let's go. So as we've seen in previous lessons, we have an on-complete callback set on this tween here that's scaling my buddy Fred. And when the tween is done running, the on-complete is going to fire and we're going to log out the string on-complete. So let's just run this to make sure it works. And you're going to see that when Fred grows, boom, we get on-complete down here in the console. And one of the most common beginner mistakes is that people put the parentheses right here, which forces this function to execute immediately before the tween even runs. To illustrate that, I'm just going to give this tween a duration of two seconds. Let me clear the console. And now when I run, you'll see that before the animation is done, oncomplete happens immediately, okay? So we just want to reference the function here. We do not want to execute it. Now, suppose you want to pass in a custom parameter to this onComplete. So let's put in a parameter of message, and then inside the tween, we're going to add an onComplete params property, and this needs to be an array, and this is one of the biggest beginner mistakes. You're going to do something like put hello here, okay? And then on my onComplete, I want to make sure that I'm logging out whatever comes into this function as an argument. So if I run this right now, we are not going to get the desired results. We get nothing right here. And if we go into our browser console, we're going to get this error of create list from array like called on non object. Okay. So the problem here is that GSAP wants us to pass in an array, even if it's one parameter, because, well, we may in the future have multiple parameters we want to pass in. So let me just do one of these jobbies right here. So now I'm wrapping that string inside of an array. And when I run, you're going to see now that we get hello, we get my custom parameter. If I want to pass in a number also, maybe I say, hey, I want to pass in the number six. So in my on complete, maybe I'll have another parameter called num, and maybe I'll want to output it as well. So let me run. As soon as Fred grows, you're going to see we get hello and six. So this is the proper way to pass parameters into a callback function. Next, we'll talk about callback scope. If you hang around the Greensock forums long enough, you'll hear the phrase that callbacks are scoped to the animation itself. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's look at our very basic example here where we're going to go back to having just a very simple on complete callback and that callback is going to just log out this, all right? So when it comes to scope, we want to know what is this, all right? So let's run. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a log that's too big for CodePen. So what we're going to do is open up our good old dev tools and you'll see that we log out the tween, all right? And inside that object, we have all these cool things like the vars object, where we see the scale is three, duration 0 0.5, overwrite false, delay zero, on complete. And then we have all these different properties of the tween. It's pretty cool what you can get. So again, that means that the scope is the tween itself. If I wanna know what the target of the tween is, well, I could say this dot, and in GSAP3, we have a targets method, which returns an array of all the targets. So let's run this, and you'll see the animation. There it is. And again, we'll go back to our handy dandy console, and you'll see that we have an array now with image.fred, and in there, we can see that we have, oh, all this like weird DOM stuff, all right? Uh, what's cool, though, is let's say we want to get the actual DOM element itself. Well, check this out. We know that we only have one Fred in this document, so we can just say, hey, give me the object with an index of zero. So now the next time I run, we're gonna see the animation and we can just open up our CodePen console and here you'll see the actual DOM element, all right? It's an image with a class of Fred. Here's the source attribute and you'll see that GSAP set this transform on it, okay? So it's pretty cool. We can use callbacks to get information 
about the animation. And with that being said, a quick little warning about using arrow functions as callbacks. All the cool kids nowadays want to use those fancy arrow functions, right? So it's going to be tempting sometimes when you're doing an on complete to just, you know, bang out a one liner like, all right, we'll just put in an arrow function here and I can say console.log and I'll say hello. Looks like I got one too many parens there and let's run this. And once it runs, we will open up the console and we get hello. So that works and it's going to be tempting to do that. And you know what? That's absolutely fine. But just remember, if you want to do something like log out the duration of the tween and use the keyword this, when you run, you're going to get an error. If we open up the DevTools console, we're going to say this dot duration is not a function. And the reason for that is that arrow functions are scoped to themselves, okay? So in an arrow function, in a callback, we're not going to be able to get any information about the tween because this does not refer to the tween anymore. Just keep that in mind about arrow functions. So this brings us to our next topic, changing the scope of a callback. There are times where maybe you don't want the animation to be the scope. You want this to mean something else. So in this demo here, things are a little bit different. I have a Fred class and a Fred object is going to have an animation property, which is going to be a tween. And there's gonna be an on complete callback specified. We're going to have a message property, which is a very basic string here. And then we have our on complete function or method now defined right here. And we're just going to log out on complete. In order for this code to mean anything, I need to instantiate a new Fred object. So let me just uh, run this and we'll see a very quick animation as we have. And then we get on complete. So in this case, I might want to output this object's message. So let's get rid of on complete here. And if I log this, as we learned in our last demo, that this is going to be the actual tween. And we'll just open up our console again and we see again that we get the tween. No surprise there. But I want this to be the Fred itself, all right? The Fred object. So in order to do that, in the tween, I'm going to set a callback scope property and I'm going to say this. And what is this? Well, this is the instance of this Fred. So let's run and we'll see what happens. So let's go over to our browser console. And here, this is a Fred object and it has an animation property and a message property. And we can see that the animation is actually the tween, all right? So this custom object that I created, we can see all of its properties in the console. So cool. So now in the on complete callback, this refers to the Fred, which means that I can get a property of that Fred. I could say this dot message. So now when I run, we should see in the browser console that we get I am Fred. And what's cool about setting things up this way is if I still want to know stuff about the animation, you know what? Let's get this dot animation dot duration. All right. The animation is a property of that object. So when I run, I'm going to get 0.5 because that is the default duration of an animation in GSAP 3. And here's a list of all the animation callbacks. I've only gone over on complete, but they all work the same. And here you have a list of all the param properties as well. It's important to note that all callbacks for a given animation will share the same scope. Definitely check out the green sock docs for more information. This video is part of my premium course, GSAP 3 Beyond the Basics, where I help you take your GSAP skills to the next level. Check the description below for more information. If you like this video and want to see more free ones, subscribe to the channel. This video over here is a great place to start. Thanks for watching.